this morning for brekkie i actually had raw chocolate because i was in a massive rush i know that's no excuse and uh i was doing book signing so i had some coconut milk raw chocolate which was delicious. but generally at the moment i go through phases generally i'm doing um smoothies at the moment with bee pollen on top and i put frozen banana spinach blueberries some coconut water in there and it changes every single day but i with my smoothies I love them to be really thick, almost so thick that you have to have them with a spoon, so frozen banana is the key to that. The craziest food trend I've ever tried is this thing called freeganism, and I was in New York filming and I dumpster dived and ate out of a dumpster in New York, and the producer that was filming me was like, I was like, okay, so we'll just hold it and I don't really have to eat it or we'll replace it with a clean one, and he was like, no, you have to eat out of the bin. So I literally ate a banana out of the bin. So at least that was like covered. But um, dumpster diving is probably the craziest food trend that I wholeheartedly embraced in the streets of New York. The place in the world that most inspires me is probably, I know this sounds really cheesy and corny, they say home is where the heart is. So it's funny, like anywhere that I am happy and shining and, you know, being around people that inspire me and people that I love, I am so there and you know it can be in Hawaii I love Hawaii because I'm a beach junkie um, but it could be in New York it could be in my home in Sydney it could be visiting dad in Melbourne or my boyfriend or something it can be anywhere that I'm around people I love I'm inspired the book that changed my life was probably you're gonna laugh at this i'm a massive steve Irwin fan and um i always watch his dvds over and over and if i ever have a bad day i'll go home and watch steve Irwin. and just his passion enthusiasm for conservation inspires me so there's a book that um terry Irwin wrote about steve called i think it's called my steve and it was just really awesome and uh, like I'm he's like my hero my last book's dedicated to both my dad and him <laughs> the most memorable experience I had when writing the happy cookbook was right at the end of recipe testing so it's a quite a big process and I'm not naturally good in the kitchen like I make way more mistakes than successes definitely but I love it and I enjoy it and it was right at the end of recipe testing so by that stage you're pretty exhausted and you're just ready to get the manuscript into the hot hands of your publishers because it's a lot of fun but also a lot of blood sweat and tears as well and I'd made this pineapple crumble and I was going to serve it with some beautiful coconut ice cream and a little bit of maple on top and some fresh coconut chips I thought oh, this is going to be delicious and my housemate came downstairs a good friend of mine Oscar and he came downstairs and he goes what is that and I go pineapple crumble what do you think Tropicana like I was so excited and he's like that sounds disgusting and I was like mortified and and you know what it stayed in the book and I think it's a great recipe but it was one of those experiences where I was like oh, what if people don't like it and I and I had a teary and I freaked out but it was awesome and it made me realize that you're never going to please everybody and everyone has different taste buds and that's actually what is so awesome about food and the second that I um, got the cookbook and showed that same person, Oscar, he was like, I'm not even a foodie and I'm falling in love with you. So I was wrapped. I still want him over, even though the pineapple crumble did make the cut.